0-3. I'm Extravolt, and this is The Joy of Why, a podcast from Quanta Magazine that takes you into some of the biggest unanswered questions in math and science today. 0-12. If you've ever wondered what are we actually made of, you probably found yourself going down a rabbit hole of discoveries. Just like other living things, of course, we're made of cells. And cells, in turn, are made of molecules, and molecules are made of atoms. Dig even deeper, and pretty soon you'll find yourself at the level of electrons and quarks. These are the particles that have traditionally been considered to be the end of the line, the fundamental building blocks of matter. 039. But today, we know that's not really the case. Instead, physicists tell us that at the deepest level, everything is made up of mysterious entities, fluid-like substances that we call quantum fields. These invisible fields sometimes act like particles, sometimes like waves. They can interact with one another. They can even, some of them, flow right through us. The theory of quantum fields is arguably the most successful scientific theory of all time. In some cases, it makes predictions that agree with experiments to an astonishing 12 decimal places. On top of that, quantum field theory has also been shedding enormous light on certain questions in pure mathematics, especially in the study of four-dimensional shapes and even higher-dimensional spaces. Yet there's also reason to believe that quantum field theory is missing something. It seems to be mathematically incomplete, leaving us with many unanswered questions. 138. Joining me now to discuss all this is Professor David Tong. David is a theoretical physicist at the University of Cambridge. His specialty is quantum field theory, and he's also renowned as an exceptionally gifted teacher and expositor. Among his many honors, he was awarded the Adams Prize in 2008, one of the most prestigious awards that the University of Cambridge bestows. He's also a Simons investigator, an award from the Simons Foundation to scientists and mathematicians to study fundamental questions. The Simons Foundation also funds this podcast. David, thank you so much for joining us today. A close-up portrait of a light-skinned man wearing a black suit with short, dark hair. He is wearing rectangular, black-rimmed glasses. David Tong, David Tong, 215. Hi, Steve. Thanks a lot for having me. Strogatz. I'm thrilled to have a chance to talk to you. I've enjoyed reading your lectures on the internet and watching some of your fantastic talks on YouTube. So this is a great treat. Let's start off with the basics. We're going to be talking about fields today. Tell us who originated them. Usually Michael Faraday gets the credit. What was his idea? And what did he discover? Tong, 237. It all goes back to Michael Faraday. Faraday was one of the great experimental physicists of all time. He was very much an experimental physicist, not a theorist. He left school at the age of 14. He knew essentially no mathematics. And yet rather wonderfully, he built up this intuition for the way the universe works. That meant he really made one of the most important contributions to theoretical physics. Over a period of about 25 years, he was playing with ideas of electricity and magnetism. He was getting magnets and wrapping copper wire around them. He did a couple of fairly important things like discover electromagnetic induction and invent the electric motor. 319. And after about 20 years of this, he made the very bold proposal that pictures he had cooked up in his mind to explain the way things were working was actually the correct description of the universe that we live in. 333. So let me give you an example. If you take a couple of bar magnets and you push them together so that the two north poles approach each other, it's an experiment that we've all done. And as you push these magnets together, you feel this spongy force that's pushing them apart. Faraday made the very bold proposal that there was actually something in between the magnets. It's amazing because you look at the magnets there. It's just thin air. There's clearly nothing there. But Faraday said there was something there. There was what we now call a magnetic field there. He called it a line of force, and that this magnetic field was every bit as real as the magnets themselves, 411. So it was a very new way of thinking about the universe we live in. He suggested that not only are there particles in the universe, but in addition, there's this other kind of object, a very different kind of object, a field, which exists everywhere in space all at once. He said we would now say in modern language that at every single point in the universe there are two vectors, two arrows, and these vectors tell us the direction and the magnitude of the electric and the magnetic field. 
443. So he left us with this picture of the universe in which there's kind, of a dichotomy that there's two very, very different objects. There's particles, which are setting up electric and magnetic fields. And then these electric and magnetic fields themselves are waving and evolving, and in turn telling the particles how to move. So there's this sort of intricate dance between what particles are doing and what fields are doing. And really his big contribution was to say these fields are real, they're really every bit as real as the particles. Strogatz, 512. So how then did the concept of fields change once quantum mechanics was discovered? Tong, 518. So by the time quantum mechanics came around, this is now 1925, and we have this sort of peculiar view of the world. So we know that there are electric and magnetic fields, and we know that the ripples of these electromagnetic fields are what we call light. But in addition, because of the quantum revolution, we know that light itself is made of particles, photons, 541. And so there's kind of a question that emerges, which is, how should you think of this relationship between the fields on the one hand and the photons on the other? And I think there's two logical possibilities for the way this could work. It could be that you should think of electric and magnetic fields as comprised of lots and lots of photons, rather like a fluid is comprised of lots and lots of atoms, and you think the atoms are the fundamental object. Or alternatively, it could be the other way around. It could be that the fields are the fundamental thing and the photons come from little ripples of the fields. So they were the two logical possibilities. 618. And the big development in, well, it sort of starts in 1927, but it takes a good 20 or 30 years until this is fully appreciated. The big appreciation, then, is that it's the fields that are really fundamental, that the electric and magnetic field is at the basis of everything. And little ripples of the electric and magnetic field get turned into little bundles of energy that we then call photons due to the effects of quantum mechanics. 644. And the wonderful big step, one of the great unifying steps in, in the history of physics, is to understand that that same story holds for all other particles. That the things we call electrons and the things we call quarks are not themselves the fundamental objects. Instead, there is spread throughout the entire universe something called an electron field, exactly like the electric and magnetic fields. And the particles that we call electrons are little ripples of this electron field. And the same is true for any other particle you care to mention. There's a quark field. In fact, there are six different quark fields throughout the universe. There are neutrino fields. There are fields for gluons and W bosons. And whenever we discover a new particle, the most recent being the Higgs boson, we know that associated to that is a field which underlies it, and the particles are just ripples of the field. Strogatz, 733. Is there a particular name that we should associate with this way of thinking? Tong, 736. There is one person, and he's a... He's been almost erased from the history books because he was a very key member of the Nazi party. And he was a member of the Nazi party way before it was cool to be a member of the Nazi party. His name is Pasquale Jordan, and he was one of the founders of quantum mechanics. He was on the original papers with Heisenberg and others. But he was really the person that first appreciated that if you start with a field and you apply the rules of quantum mechanics, you end up with a particle.